Hello class. Today we're going to be looking at just this idea of a parent function. We're going to talk about it for the first time and we're going to talk about transformations of these parent functions. Uh, today will just be an introduction and we'll be doing a lot more uh, work with transformations of parent functions as we go on. Let's start off by defining the parent function. The parent function is the most basic function in a family. It's, it's the parent, it's um, all of its children inherit the features and the characteristic of this parent function. Um, so when we talk about a function family, we're talking about a set of functions that are all transformations of the parent function. And we'll talk more about what we mean by transformations. But, you know, from a visual standpoint, here's an example of the parent function for a quadratic. All of um, its children, you could say, are different types of transformations of the parent. Um, they all have the same kind of characteristics. Um, they all have a vertex at some point. Um, they're symmetrical on both sides. Um, uh, they go up or they go down forever and ever. So they, they all have this basic U-shape. Um, so this is an example of a function family. We're going to start off by looking at four different function families. Uh, we have the constant uh, family, the linear family, uh, the absolute value, and the quadratic. And we have the most basic equation for each one of those written right up here. We have our domain and range for each one of them, and we've been talking about domain and range. Let's just look at the domain and range for the quadratic function. Um, in this case here, x can be any value. We can put in negative 100, negative 10, 0, 10, 1,000. All real numbers can be plugged into this function, and we'll get out a, a result. Whenever we plug anything into this, whether it's a positive or negative number, when we square it, we're always going to get a positive number. So the, the range of this function is going to be y is greater than 0. And remember, we can also write it in this other notation where we say, starting from 0, we go to infinity. And that's another way of writing the range in interval notation. Okay. Um, you know, when we talk about, uh, in, in this chapter we're going to be looking a lot at uh, linear uh, functions and absolute values. We'll be moving on to quadratic in subsequent chapters. So let's talk about this word transformation. Transformation means um, changes in the size, in the shape, the position or the orientation. And we learned a lot about transformations in geometry. We learned um, actually several types. Uh, the first most basic type was translations. Uh, translations will shift um, an object, and in this particular case um, for parent functions, it moves the graph vertically or and or horizontally only. Um, its size does not change. So here's an example. Here's um, an absolute value function, we see um, the absolute value bar, so we know that its parent is the absolute value. Um, this dotted line here is the most, this is the parent function, the simplest of all parent, uh, of all absolute value functions. As we graph this, right now um, we're going to graph it just by making a table. Um, we're going to create some x values, create some y values, and we're going to plot each one of those, and then when we see the form shaping up, we'll kind of generate the uh, full shape. And we know it's going to have this V shape because um, we know that the parent function, um, absolute value of X, has this V shape. And so this translated version will just be moving to a different point. And in this case, it was translated down by three units. It went down by three and it went to the right by two units. So translation, that's our first type. We had a reflection type of um, uh, transformation, and in this case, we're flipping the graph over a line of reflection. So here's an example. 
Um, again, um, we're, we're going to be using the parent graph of an absolute value function. And um, so we start off with this. And again, let's, let's make a table. Um, we'll put in some values. <clears throat> and in this case, when we plot it, we see that the absolute value graph flipped upside down. It started up here, and it went down here. So if we, you know, examine a specific plot point, for example, this point negative 3, 3, when uh, we now put a, a, a negative sign in front of the function, all of a sudden the y value comes down instead to negative 3. So we have this point down here, negative 3, comma, negative 3. And the line of reflection for this case is the x-axis right here. This point, <clears throat> this specific point here, got reflected down to this point down here. A key property of, uh, of reflections are that the reflected point is going to be equal distant from the line of reflection. So the distance from this point right here to the line of reflection is three um, units away. Um, this reflected point is also going to be three units away from the line of reflection. So translations, reflections, and then we have a concept called uh, vertical stretching and shrinking. In this case, we're multiplying all the y coordinates by a constant value that's greater than zero. In the case of stretching, we're going to be multiplying by an, a constant value that's greater than 1. And in the case of a shrink, we're multiplying by a number between 0 and 1. So here's an example. Let's see what happens here. I have p of x is equal to 1 half x squared. This is a, a quadratic function. And, and right now, let's look at um, what happens when we plot some points. And um, first of all, going to actually just um, uh, plot out some points of the parent function itself, the x squared function. And if I plot this out, I get my parabola. Now I'm going to plot the p of x function, which is one-half times x squared. So I'm going to take this column x squared, and I'm going to multiply each one of these numbers by one-half. And so you can see that all the numbers shrank. It went from 4 to 2, 1 to 1 half, 0 remained the same, but all these other numbers got multiplied by 1 half and it, and it shrunk. So now if we were to plot these points, we would see this function, so this blue graph here is our p of x function, which is uh, kind of shrunk down from this purple graph right here, which is the parent function. And so we call this a vertical shrink. Each of these points here shrunk down to this other point here. Let's look at another case. h of x is equal to 3 times the absolute value of x. And again, let's start off by plotting or by creating a table of the absolute value parent function. And so this is a picture of that. Now I'm going to create another column where we multiply each of the uh, 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 you know, numbers here by 3, so it's 3 times the absolute value of x. And we could see that in this case all the numbers grew. It, it grew by a factor of 3. So this point here used to be at the y-coordinate of 1, now it's at the y-coordinate of 3. And if we were to graph this one out, it looks like this, and we call this a stretch case. It stretches again because this point here stretched up. This point here stretched up. Finally, we have a combination of transformations. So we can do multiple ones of these. We can do a translation with a reflection. We can do a reflection with a vertical shift and, and so on and so forth. So here's an example where we have a more complex looking equation. 
Um, and let's describe. Today we're just talking about describing what we see. We're going to learn more details about how to graph these in the next lessons, but today we're just going to be wanting to describe what we see. So if I were to take a graphing calculator, um, I would see something like this. I know my parent function has this shape. When I graph it on a graphing calculator, I see that b of x has this blue shape down here. So we notice the following. Um, one way we can interpret this is that it, the first thing that happened was that there was a reflection over the x-axis. Um, after the reflection, it became something like that. Um, after the reflection. Then, from the reflection, it got translated from here to over here. So, um, we could see from the vertex standpoint, uh, it got translated three units to the right and two units down. So, this is the idea of a combination of transformations. Uh, today, we're just visualizing it using the words reflection, translation, and vertical stretching. And as we move forward, we're going to learn how to graph these uh, even in uh, uh, more efficient ways without using graphing calculators. Okay, that's the lesson for today.